Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Timely Torah. This is a weekly class on the Torah portion. And if you are watching this via Facebook Live, the source sheet for this morning is up on your uh, screen. And if you are listening and watching this with uh, the YouTube video later as part of our Beth Tikva weekly email, the source sheet is uh, right next to where you click to get to this video. I have something fascinating that I would like to share with you today. And we pick up the story with Yaakov. You re remember that Yaakov will run away from home. He will be threatened by his twin brother who is trying to kill him. He has a dream. He places himself down and sees this incredible ladder of angels walking upwards, downwards. Since that dream, he has gotten married twice to four women you can work out the math there he has had 12 children he has worked as a shepherd for nearly 20 years for a man that he has never really liked and in the end he has become fabulously wealthy and skipped town he's left home he's been able to somehow or other make peace with his father-in-law who he has disrespected and been disrespected by. And at the very end, he now is heading back home. And at this point, at this point, he's going to see his brother for the first time in over 20 years. And the Torah presents an incredible moment before this face down. And I would like to share with you just the reading of the text. If I can share my screen, I'd like you to take a look at the text with me um, as we go through the Torah portion together. So the Torah says in Perak Lamed Bet, Bereshit, chapter 32, He will, am I in the right place? Yes, the Yakam Balaila Hahu Viakach et State Nashav et State Shepchatav, Betahadasa Yeladav, Vayavo et Meeva Yabo. That same night he will get up, he will take his two wives, he will take his two maidservants and his eleven children, and he will pass them over the Yabok River. Viakhaim Vyavirem et Hanacha, he takes them. And he passes them over the stream, and he will send over all of his possessions. Yaakov is left alone. And a man will wrestle with him until the dawn. These words are so pregnant with meaning. It's incredible. Let's focus on who this person is, Ish. Now, if you ask any kid, they will oftentimes tell you, Yaakov wrestled with an angel. And we will see exactly that approach later. But what is the Torah? Let's start off with what the Torah calls him. The Yaavek Ish Imo. Yaakov will wrestle with a man, Ish. When he saw that he could not overcome him, he could not prevail against him. He will touch his hip socket, but Yaakov, and he will strain the hip socket. Some say he will knock out the hip socket. In his wrestling with him. So this man will injure Yaakov. He injures him in the hip. And then the man, this unnamed man, he will go on to say, let me go free, send me away, because the dawn has risen. I will not send you away until you bless me. That's an amazing thing to say. He doesn't know who he is. Now suddenly he thinks that he can receive a blessing from him. And after all, this is the individual that's hurt him, injured him. The Yom love Ma Shamecha, the Yom He says to him, "What is your name?" 
And he replied, Yaakov. Lo Yaakov, od shimcha. No longer will your name be Yaakov. Ki im Yisrael, rather Yisrael. Ki sarita im Elohim, ve'im anashim betuchal, because you have struggled with God and with men, and you have overcome. Amazing. An incredible, an incredible passage. Who is this person? It's um, it's 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 a it's an amazing it's an amazing image. It's an amazing image. Who is this person? And I want to suggest. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the classic commentaries. The first approach is that it was indeed an angel. Why do we say that it was an angel? Well, actually. In a few other circumstances, we have a mysterious man, an ish. We have a mysterious man. And the Torah actually says, ah, this has to be an angel. We will see next week, Yosef fumbling in the fields. And it will say that he encounters upon a man. And the sages say, who is this man? It has to be none other than an angel. And it brings a proof text from the book of Daniel, where Daniel says, the man Gabriel, Gabriel, the archangel, I saw him in a vision. So we see that Gabriel, Gabriel, the angel, the Malach, is referred to as an ish, a man. And so incredibly, this ish that Yaakov is wrestling with is actually not an ish, not a man at all, but rather an angel. And here, the Midrash Rabbah actually says, who was the angel? Because after all, if you're going to have an angel that you fight with, it's going to have to be a certain specific type of angel. Says the Midrash, it was none other than the ministering angel of Asaph. Amazing, amazing. This idea is borne out from the fact that every single thing on earth has an angel behind it, supporting it, willing it to come to its fulfillment in life. Even, says the Midrash, the smallest blade of grass has its own angel standing over it, willing it to grow. And so Asav too has his own protective angel. And that idea that Yaakov is wrestling with an angel fits so well with the tension before what is about to happen because he's about to encounter his twin brother for the first time in over 20 years physically and so before he can do battle physically with him he has to potentially do battle spiritually he has to work out all of the old resentments he has to work out all of the old fears but there's an alternative approach there's an alternative approach to who this ish is. And believe it or not, the ish, this angel, this being that Yaakov is struggling with, fighting against, wrestling with, is actually none other than God himself. After all, if it's going to be interpreted as an angel who is battling with him, every angel is sent on a mission. And that person sending the angel would, of course, be God. So here God cuts out the middleman, so to speak, and says, it's time that you and I wrestled. It's time that you and I struggled. I, I'm going to give you this opportunity now to really work through whatever issues you might have with me. And incredibly... This interpretation has become very popular in recent years as people struggle with faith. The subject of having difficulty believing in God, struggling with God, being upset with God, having complaints against God. This image of Yaakov struggling with God is, is, is a very beautiful one. And it actually fits the text perfectly because if you take a look again at the text, the text says... No longer will your name be called Yaakov. Lo Yaakov yame od shimcha. No longer will you be Yaakov. Ki im Yisrael, 
you will be called Yisrael. Why? Because you struggled with God and with man, and you prevailed. Yisrael, the name Israel, the name actually that we as a people bear, is a contraction of two words, Sarita and El. You have struggled with God. It's amazing that we as the Jewish people have embedded in our name, B'nai Yisrael, Yisrael, the people that struggle with God. It's almost a testament to the complexity of what it means to be a Jewish person and specifically to have Jewish faith. But I want to suggest with you an alternative approach to the identity of this ish. I don't think it is the Sarah shall Esav, although that's certainly a valid possibility. I don't think it is God, although that is a beautiful possibility as well. Oh, I forgot going back. What does he say at the very end? He names the place Penuel, the face of God. So even Yaakov believes it was God that he was struggling with. But I don't, I, I'm rejecting though, they're beautiful and I love them and they're true. I'm rejecting those interpretations right now because what I want to suggest is an incredible midrash on discovering who the identity of this ish is. And actually I find it the most compelling and I, fit, I feel it fits in with the story of Yaakov. If you have been closely following Yaakov's life this far, it's taken from um, the midrash rabba. I've got it here for you. I'm going to share it again with you and take a look um, at text three on the source sheet. I hope you can see this. Rabbi Hunya Ama Nidmelo Bedmut Ro'e. Rabbi Hunya said, This ish appeared to Yaakov in the image of a shepherd. Lezerson, Belezerson. This one had a flock, meaning Yaakov, Bezetson, and this one, this Ish, this individual that appeared to him also had a flock. Lezegamalim, Belezegamalim, this one had camels, and this one had camels. Amalo, Hevet Shalcha, Vachakach, Anima Vet Shali. This mystery man said to him, Look, you take across the river what's yours, and afterwards I'll take across what's mine. And so Yaakov, our father, took across what was his and said, look, let's go back across the other side of the river. Let's see, maybe we forgot something. At that point, after he went back and he was alone, a man started wrestling with him. That is a stunning midrash. And if we unpack it, if we think about it for just a second, if we explore what it actually means, I think you'll find that this is the most compelling, this is the most powerful of all of the possible interpretations. The man was a shepherd, just like Yaakov. The man had exactly what Yaakov had. The man was getting ready to do exactly what Yaakov was doing. In other words, finish my sentence, it's an unavoidable conclusion. In other words, the man was Yaakov himself. This is the figure that he needed to reckon with the night before he returned. It wasn't the brother he betrayed, nor the father he had tricked, nor the God that he had tried to establish a relationship with. His primary struggle was with himself. On another night, 20 years ago, he had a very different dream. And in that dream, he understood that if he could conquer himself, then the power of God would flow through him. He saw it all so quickly. And so clearly, and so sharply that night. And yet it all started to fade away over a slow 20 years. Yaakov was working. 
Yaakov was struggling, he was outsmarting, he was even trying to be scheming. And through that maneuvering, through that struggling with everyone around him, struggling with Leah, struggling with Rachel, struggling with Lavan, he was struggling to become an ish. He was struggling to become a person, a man himself. And he realizes at this point, if I'm struggling to acquire and accumulate, then I'll never have enough. There will never be enough wives. There will never be enough children. There will never be enough money. There will never be enough cattle. There will never be enough stuff. I've got to figure out how to be whole. I've got to figure out how to encapsulate everything. And for that, he's going to need God. And for that, he's going to have to struggle. So that he can create a life not based on guile, not based on trickery, but on simplicity, wholeheartedness. And that's why it says that you have struggled not just with God, but it means you've struggled with man as well. You've merited to struggle with your faith, with God, and now you've got to reckon with your own humanity. And amazingly, at the very, very end, the last words of this dialogue, if you go back and take a look, Tell me, says Yaakov, what's your name? And what does the man say in response? Why do you ask my name? Boom. And it's a mic drop. It's an amazing thing. That's the end of the conversation. He says, tell me your name. And he responds back, why do you ask my name? And I'd like to interject and put in the following unspoken words. Why do you ask my name? Don't you see? I'm you. It's you, Yaakov. It's been you all along. All these years, you've been struggling. You've been fighting. You've been fighting with everybody around you. But really, it was an internal battle with yourself that you needed to fight. You needed to reckon who you are and who you want to be. And now it's over. Now you've succeeded. Now you've come out the other end. It's time to go home. It's time to face your twin brother because now you can truly be who you were always destined to become. Powerful, powerful midrash, incredible ideas. And something all of us can learn from each time we look in the mirror. Can we become that person we were born to be? Shabbat Shalom, everybody.